off. Take this off. This stuff's supposed to be cherry red. I think what's coming out of here now is probably coming out of the torque converter. But we'll see if it stops. Take this off, take this off, drop this in the jar, take this off, take this off. So the thinner side goes down, okay? The thinner side is first, okay? And then it goes like this, okay? And then the thicker side, the thicker washer, the bigger, thicker washer is on the top, like this. So the bigger opening is actually on the bottom. Okay, and then of course the O-ring fits in the middle. Okay, that's the way it goes, like this. Okay, and then this goes over here, upside down, like this, on top. Okay, like that. That's the way it fits. Okay, so I'm going to take this apart. Okay, and I'm going to the thinner piece, drop it in here to clean these right here. I'm, gonna, I'm dipping this in gasoline, so I might I might clean these, maybe, but I don't want the gasoline to eat them up. But here we go. I'm gonna drop them in here, okay, and then I'm gonna add some gasoline. What is it to clean up? It's a solvent, yeah. Do we need a tilt brush for that? No, I'm just going to shake, rattle, and roll. Okay. Yeah. See, they're needles. I gotcha. So you put back the needles. I have to put back the needles. How yeah. do you put it back? Well, just put them in with grease and drop them in. 
Okay. Oh, okay. They don't they don't go in there in a slot or something. They go in the slot there. The actual needle. There's a slot. Okay. Using the slot. But it's just to position them so they don't bang on each other. And to keep them, it's kind of in a cage to keep them from working sort of their like way out. Sort of like a spacer. It's a cage, actually. Yes, yeah, a cage. A spacer it's a, and a cage. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this this is the part that you wanted to replace or walk. This on. is the part that I thought would fail. Okay. I thought it was missing all these. Okay. But it isn't. But we got it. We got them all, and, and we're fortunate, very fortunate, because this is a very, very rare part, very hard to come by. What is it? Was it? What is it? What is it called? It's called a thrust bearing for the uh, for the front shock or the front strut. Okay. It's a yeah. Uh, it actually holds the weight of the automobile. Okay. Okay. Right. It holds just the weight. This for that one per no, one per wheel. No, just just for the front because it allows the wheels to turn. Oh, I see. So two and it's two in the front. Yeah, one on the left, one on the right. Okay, gotcha. some of this grease, put it in here, okay, I go right in there. The grease is red in color, huh? It looks yeah. like your fingers are bleeding. Yeah, and uh, I stick them in the slot there. Let's see. And I, see. Get it. This is for your steering wheel? Yeah. Okay. This allows the, the wheel to uh, move left and right. Without this, you, you couldn't go around a corner because it wouldn't let, the, let you turn the wheels. Okay. It would freeze up on you. Okay. Lay the washers on there, made myself a little sandwich, holds the bearings in. So the piece that you were working on with those little pins yeah. that you put in is in between. It's in between all yeah. this. It's in the middle. See? So you got washers on there's, both yeah, sides. There's a bearing and there's two washers on okay, both sides. I gotcha. One of the washers has a smaller hole in it. I gotcha. Okay, one of the washers has a bigger hole in it. Okay. I gotcha. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to set that down for a second. We'll wipe this off. Okay. Okay. The rubber o rings came out clean. Oh, yeah. It's pretty clean. You don't leave it in there. No, I Just wouldn't want to. Rings. Yeah. I'm just trying to get the grease all the grease and the grit off of it because I don't I don't want grit in there. Okay. Grit. I don't want grit in there. So the dust make you the get bearings it out. make the bearings wear out prematurely. I just you know. What is that piece called? The one that's tower of wires coil. That one. This? Yeah. This is a coil it. coil spring. Coil spring. Yeah, that's what supports the automobile. And this is the McPherson strut suspension. This is a strut, a shock absorber. Is that what you're working on, a shock absorber? That's correct. Okay. You had to take the whole thing out. You'll see how it all goes together here. The, the shock absorber keeps the uh, wheel car from going <coughs> up and down? Keeps the wheel from bouncing down the road. I gotcha. Because if it didn't have a shock absorber, it'd hit a bump and it'd be like a basketball, just keep bouncing. And the shock absorber keeps it from bouncing. Because the wheels made out of rubber, just keep bouncing. Okay. And here's, the, here's the other one. Looks like a simple little O ring. Okay. Okay. And that came out clean. All right, now what I'm going to do here, okay, 
is I'm going to take this. I think I'll get a little bit greasy. Okay. It's clean and greasy. I'm going to stick it in there like that. Okay. Fits in there. Everything's lubed up nice and greasy. Okay. And then I'm going to take this little puppy here. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna put it on the outside. Okay. Of this. Okay. And there you have it. Okay. And this whole assembly fits on this. Okay. Just like this. This is called a uh, strut tower, strut tower, and this is what keeps the strut from falling through, supports the top of the, the strut, the shock, okay, without this, then you can see that it would just go right through, it would poke itself right through. And this is mounted in rubber. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, it never hurts to get a little grease on it. A little grease on it. It's a spring compressing tool. Okay. And it fits on here like this. Got it backwards. Okay. I gotcha. this 
put it on here. Goes in there. And you're going to do the same process on the other side yes. as well? Yes, I am. You don't intend to do this all today, do you? Oh, no. Oh, no. I was going to say because it's, it's, it's later in the afternoon oh, now. No. So one day at a time, one side, one you got day. Plenty of time for this. Parts are coming in. Oh, you got, got it. Plenty of time. Your parts are this. coming for about a week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you got time, okay. So what we're going to do here is stick this. The top of that, like that, and then here's the here's the nut. It fits on top of the strut. Okay. So. So that piece so, done, ready to be So installed. when you turn the wheel, see, this is attached to here. So when you turn the wheel. I want to hear is this one here. Yeah, see, this fits it? right in here. Okay. okay. So when you turn the wheel, it allows this to rotate. This is held up in the body, solid. But it allows the spring and the shock to rotate. Okay. Gotcha. This is being held here. So this knuckle. It allows the wheel to move left and right, see? Because this is sandwiched in here and held tight like that. Gotcha. See? Okay. And you can see that the weight of the automobile is on this coil spring, but the rotation is dependent upon those little needle bearings. Gotcha. Because that's where the weight is. See the boot, how it's split? Can you see it? See the, see? It's cut. It's cut. Oh, I see, okay. Okay, it's worn out. out of rubber. It's yeah. Cut. When that happens, dirt and grease gets in there and ruins the, the joint. Okay, so this is and, and washes the grease out. And these CV joints are not only difficult to replace, but they're very expensive. Uh, They're very much, expensive. How much per piece? This one is because this car is so old, it's $250 just for one axle. Okay. Now, it wasn't that much years ago. A but, because, four, four. but because this car is a classic, no, I think I got both axles for $200, bucks, $225 both sides. Okay. But, but now it's $250 just for one side. I gotcha. Okay? And that's if you can get it. But, you know, I, I saw it. <laughs> uh, the people that had it, believe it or not, the only people that had it was some kind of company in Norway or Netherlands or something. Why is the color of that green? That's a good question. Because the last one was black. Green might be. <laughs> That's a good question. I guess it's, uh, it is a special grease, but uh, 
guess it's the dye they put on. What kind of grease is that? I think it's a it's a high pressure grease and uh, probably a high temperature grease, but it's specially made for CV joints. And it's what came in the it's what came with the kit. You're working it with the bearings down there? Yeah, I'm working trying to work it in the bearings down there. Do you want me to hold on to that rod? Oh. Better get this down, huh? Okay. Okay. Just let me know if you need assistance in holding the okay. rod in. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem with the car, a replacement for the CB boot? Yep, there it goes. Tell me that. The axle is finished. It wasn't easy because I didn't have the right tool, but I got it done with a ah uh, gosh, a chisel and a vice grip. That's what, that's what it took. Well, at least you're working out here. You've got serenaders. Yeah. you got singers there. I hear a white winged dove and I hear something else. A whole bunch of white wings. I hear it. Click. Yeah. It snaps. It's in a little cage. It's slippery from the looks of it. All right. That was from the old parts that you cleaned up already. Right. And you cleaned that grease with gasoline, didn't you? Yeah. You're not supposed to do that. It's dangerous and they advise against it, but Why did you right now it? it's the cheapest solvent you can buy. Are there any solvents out there? Oh yeah. Available? Oh yeah. This stuff you can dip it in. Parts dip that will clean it up. But it's expensive. Okay. I just use gasoline. That you can use the gasoline provided there's no rubber rings or anything, right? Uh, the rings yeah, I don't, I don't dip the gasoline, yeah. Okay.
While the turkey is baking, Chip and I are working on the brake lines of this Honda right now. Okay, this is the bad brake line I replaced. And uh, when I was inspecting it, I noticed it had a pretty nasty crack in it. I don't know if you can see it or not. But uh, it's getting ready to fail. So I elected to replace the brake line with a new one. This is original equipment. It's been on the car for well, almost 50 years. So it serviced, it served well, but uh, it's tired. And I decided to replace the brake lines. And here's the view of the brake lines that he's working on. And there's two right now. And these are located at the front wheels.